Hi, my name is Yasu, and I'm visiting Korea right now, so I'm not in Japan right now. So, um, what do I usually say? <laughs> so, yeah, uh, yeah, so in my video, I do Hito Rigodo, which means uh, talking to myself, if you know the Japanese term. And today I want to talk about my uh, experience with my my experience with uh, tapering off my sleeping pill, which is the uh, nitrazepam. So I am now getting into the tapering of uh, tapering off the stage tapering off the nitrazepam from ten milligram to five milligram, um, and then I want to just share what's been happening to me in this uh, video. So it's been already one year since I have started to take in the uh, sleeping pill, which was not the nitrozepam at first. But even before, I never taken sleeping pills because I really never had a sleep disorders or sleep issues. Sleeping is just like, I go to bed and I sleep, wake up, refreshed. That was what the sleep was for me. But a year ago, everything has changed. I went through so much difficulties to find the right combination of the sleeping pill. And then last November, finally, I was able to have my sleep issues under control with the right combination of the sleeping pills, which is the Halcyon and the Nitrozepam. And then now I am in the process of tapering off and in terms of the halocyon i finished i don't take them anymore which is a very good thing for me i think um, because i don't have to take it anymore and but i've been taking uh neutralizer still and it was time for me to taper off nitrozepam from 10 milligram to 5 milligram because uh, it has been showing, it has shown that higher dose of the effector seems like to be correlated with my sleep disorder and because I reduced the amount of the effects and event from 150 milligram to 111.5 milligram. So both my doctor and then I agreed that uh, let's give it a shot. Let's try if to taper off the neutralizer furthermore. The result is I am actually okay with five milligram. Uh, I can sleep now as much as I was able to do with uh, 10 milligram of uh, nitrozepam. So 5 milligram, 10 milligram, 10 milligram, no difference. So I'm really happy to uh, share my experience that I, I've done it. Now I take less nitrozepam to have the uh, same sleep quality, which is I'm very happy about it and I'm very uh, proud of myself. But of course, I was very nervous. I was very scared because I went through so much to battle my sleep or disorders. Compared to the depressions, it took longer for me to figure out everything in terms of the sleep issues. So. If anything, I could really say that I'm more traumatized about my sleep disorders than depressions because the first antidepressant that I was described, which is the Effexa, and then it was very effective. But it took like, I don't know, four or five months to figure out the right combinations to have the sleep disorders under control. And in that five months, I went through the hell not being able to sleep it's just i really don't want to go through that again that is why whenever i 
I reach that stage that I can consider taper off the sleep meds, it, it really gave me a lot of mixed feeling or should I try, should I not try? And then especially that first night of tapering of the sleeping pill, I'm scared. So that first night, of course, it took me a little bit longer for me to fall asleep. And then in the first week, uh, my sleeping length, like the hours that I usually slept with 10 milligram of nitrozepam compared to the length with the five milligram of nitrozepam. With five milligram, the sleeping hours got shorter, like roughly speaking, one hour shorter. So of course, because of that, I feel, I felt less energy and then feel a little bit weird. But I knew that if I continue to stick with five milligram, eventually my body will get used to it and then it will simply uh, go back to, how do I say, regular sleeping habit. And it actually happened the same way. It was not pleasant experience to go through, but I also believe in the human body is more flexible than I can imagine to adjust to a lot of things. So from the second week and the third week, uh, in terms of falling asleep, I have no issues. The sleeping hours on average, it actually went back to the same level as as same level as with the uh, 10 milligram of nitrozepam. The reason that I, why I said the average is because with five milligram of nitrozepam, my sleep quality fluctuates kind of a lot compared to before. So there's a night that I, my soul sleeping quality, sleep quality was not good, but next mo next day my sleepy uh, sleep quality is act was actually good so it really fluctuated but overall like on average uh, I sleep well I sleep longer and I can really fall asleep um, relatively quickly it's just that when the sleep quality is not good it's really not good which is something that it didn't happen when I tapered off the Halocyon and then, um, yeah, basically Halocyon. So I guess my, my feeling here is that it's really associated, um, my sleep issue is highly associated with the effects on the vaccine. So of course I reduced it to 111.5 milligram. So of course, that's gonna help me to sleep better even with uh, less nitrozepam. However, it's still affecting me. And then now I have less amount of sleeping pills in my system and less dose of the effects and venlafaxin in my system, but the balance that my body is trying to find out is just, it's not easy, I guess. So I'm not sure when I can really stop taking sleeping pills, but I can really feel that it really depends on effects and even of vaccine. But I'm really happy to say that uh, I can sleep good, okay, sometimes not okay, but not bad enough to increase uh, sleeping pill or take other sleeping pills. I'm actually, my body is okay with five milligram, which is really the um, success that I was able to achieve. And I'm hoping to keep it that way. And I get a lot, I have gotten some comments about the sleeping pills and the sleeping issues in both Japanese and English. 
I, I really have noticed a lot of people actually suffer from sleep issues, which I couldn't really associate before everything happened. But now I can really relate, and it's not easy to deal with sleep issues and finding the right combinations. The only thing that I can probably uh, sh say with confident is that confidence is that everything is try and an error, even it's very uncomfortable, and then removing a lot of variables will help us, all of us, to figure out how to improve with a lot of consequences. What I meant is that it's been one year and then I stick with my very simple lifestyle so that whenever I have some sleep issues, it would be relatively easier for me to identify what would be causing this possibly and then just fix it and then see how it goes. And then that really gives me a good patterns of improvements and how to react and how to take measurements proactively so that I can have a lot of things under control relatively at the early stage. So for example, in my case, I go to bed usually 10 or 10.30 p.m. every night and I don't drink alcohol anymore. I've been sober for one year and then any caffeinated beverages, what I meant is coffee, I only drink 1 p.m. or 2 or 3 p.m. the latest and afterwards no matter what I don't drink it. And that was my routine. And still, if I have the sleep, some issues, some issues with sleep, then I can know what could be the possible factors would be contributing to my bad sleep conditions. It's not easy to do, but it's something that I recommend people to do so, so that we all can figure out what is going on with us individually and then what can we do to actually solve the situations because sleep is really the important things. But the most important thing is the overall health. So this is my closing things that I say every in my videos. The most important things of everybody's life is your health. So please take care of yourself, look after yourself. Because if you have health issues, you have to allocate your resources, energy, and time and everything. And you really don't get to enjoy your life. And then the people who love you, they're going to worry about you. They want to do a lot of things. And you feel very supported. You feel very, appreci you feel very appreciated. However, you feel bad that you're in that kind of situations. And you just... You feel bad that, why can I not get better ASAP? And then that's going to put so much pressure on you to create the negative, spiral, negative cycle. And then most likely that's going to affect the people who love you. And it's going to create the more complex, complicated, bad cycle. And then nobody's going to be happy about it. So to avoid everything, do not push yourself in your life. Work is important. A lot of other things are important, but not as much as your good health. So please take care of yourself, stay healthy, and then please enjoy your life. So I guess that's all for today. So thank you for watching my video. And if you feel like it, please subscribe to, my, to my channel. So for now, bye. Bye.